How can you configure your paper, spigot, and bucket server files in order to get the best performance possible? In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do just that, going over all of the key things that you need to know when you're setting up your spigot, paper, and bucket files in order to reduce lag and gain performance. Now, first things first, I do want to mention this link in the description down below is the second link down below, and it's a complete guide on optimizing your server. Everything I go through in this video kind of comes from this article here, even though I will add in a few things from our experience running a 100 player plus server at Breakdown Craft. Also want to mention the best thing you can do for lag is use high quality hardware and that is where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. Apex is the sponsor of this video. You can check them out at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. This is our very own server. The thing that I personally love about Apex is that they have high quality hardware at a very affordable price and that's why you, we use them to host our own server played at breakdowncraft.com. So nevertheless, check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and minimize our browser here and we've already got bucket, spigot, and paper files open and ready to look at. So here we are. First off, we're going to start with our bucket file because, well, it's the shortest. As you can see, it all fits kind of on one page here, whereas uh, paper doesn't. So we want to go ahead and keep bucket here. Now, what we're going to do is start off with spawn limits. Now for this, lower values mean less mobs, but avoid going too low or you'll notice mob shortages where you won't be able to find mobs and things like that. I recommend changing this to 50, 8, leave this at 5, water ambient can be dropped down to 10. Water under underground creatures can also be left at 5, and ambient can be dropped to 1. That's just like bats and stuff, so they're really and truly useless. So with that, you've kind of got your spawn limit set. There's two more things we want to look at in the bucket file here. The first is chunk GC. Change this to 400, and this is going to unload vacant chunks faster, being chunks that don't have anyone in them are going to be unloaded faster. And then ticks per here, we want to go down through these and kind of change these up. Animal spawns can be left the same. Actually, don't want to change that. Monster spawns can be up to 5. Water spawns can be up to 11. Water ambient spawns, we'll do those at 21. Water underground creature spawns, we're going to go ahead and up those to 5. And then ambient spawns, those can be set to 31. And with doing that, you're going to be able to basically have kind of all of this set up here. You can also disable autosave if you want, but just know your server will only be saved if your server stopped properly. I wouldn't really recommend doing that, but you can do that if you want by turning this to negative one, but it is not a requirement. And that's it. That's all you need to do. There are your basically setups for bucket. You want your spawn limits to be this and your ticks per spawn to be this, right? Pretty simple. Go ahead, save that, and let's move on to spigot. Now, in your spigot file, we're going to be jumping around just a little bit, and we're going to start off with max tick time. So what we want to do is actually turn this to 1000 because we want to turn it off. So we go ahead and search for max tick. We'll be able to find it. There it is. Max tick time there. What we want to do is change this to 1000. This disables this. You do not want this on because, um, well, it just doesn't work well. So we want to go ahead and disable that. It can actually break things and things like that. So disable it. It's not going to matter having that disabled. Next up is mob spawn range. And I'm just going to search for these because it's easier for me to do it that way. And there it is. Mob spawn range. I would recommend dropping this to a value of six. This actually makes things better if you used our settings for bucket because it's going to allow those spawns to kind of match your bucket files here and match what we've set in here for spawn limits and things make mobs appear more prevalent even though they're turned down if that makes sense from there we can move down to entity activation range and these are a lot so i'm going to go through and change these really fast and then we'll go through each individual one with the new values. So animals want to be 16, monsters 24, raiders will leave default at 48, misc change to 8, water change to 12, and villagers 32. If you don't leave these two kind of the same, raiders and villagers, it can break things with those. And then flying monsters, I've left that default as well, but you can lower that or turn off flying monsters in general, but that's up to you. I just want to go ahead and jump this to like 20 should be fine. But again, that is going to break things, for example, phantoms and stuff. Everything else after this, we're just going to leave the same for now. There's no real reason to do this except for tick and active villagers, which is actually the next thing on our list here. We want to change that to false. If we do that, it's going to significantly reduce the lag that you're getting from villagers on your server because when villagers aren't active, they won't be actively being ticked by the server. That is a great thing and a must have. Most villager lag comes from this one setting right here. Next up, we'll move on to the merge radius here. There's going to be two of these. There's going to be the item and the XP. This is how close items need to be together in blocks to merge together. I would recommend doing four for items and six for XP. Six being pretty high, but it shouldn't cause any issues. If you do notice XP is kind of flying all over the place, you could change both of 
of these to four. And if items are spawning and merging together too close together, you can also leave this default for items, but it is going to reduce item and XP lag on the server. From there, let's talk about nerf spawner mobs. Now, most people won't want to turn this on, but what this is going to do is any mobs that are spawned from spawners won't have any AI. They'll only be able to be pushed with things like water and pistons. They won't be able to like move themselves or attack players or anything. If you have a farm problem on your server, turn this on because it's going to reduce lag significantly from those mob farms. However, I would recommend just kind of patrolling those and making sure they don't get too out of hand and leaving this on. That way you can have spawners mobs having AI and actually being able to attack players and things like that. But it is something worth noting here. Two more settings in the spigot.yml and those are going to both be item despawn and arrow despawn rates as well as trident despawn rates. Now these can be set to kind of whatever you want. Arrow should be like 300. There's no reason to leave arrows inactive in the world, right? There's just not. Item despawn rate by default is 6,000, which is five minutes. If you wanted to lower this, you could lower it to 1,200, or you could cut it in half, do two and a half minutes to 3,000. It is up to you. On Breakdown Craft, we have cut this down to 3,000, but we can go ahead and leave it default if you want. It's kind of up to you and whatever's best, but just know that items laying around from people dying on your server will despawn faster and thus keep item lag down. Arrow despawn rates, it needs to be 300, and the same can be said about tridents. How long do you want those to lay on the ground before they automatically despawn? By default, that's probably decent. I don't expect too many tridents to be on most servers, but it is something to keep in mind and something worth looking at if you're having lag from items on the ground, specifically tridents. Let's go ahead, save spigot, and now we get to move on to the big one. Paper is, as you can see, the biggest sort of sort of config file I've ever seen. It's massive, but it adds in so many awesome features. And with that, it is going to be where the majority of this video time is spent. Because of that, I'm actually gonna go through, change all the settings to what they're supposed to be, and then kind of go through a hit list of what these settings are and show you what they should be by having them already changed. So let me do that real fast, and I will see you after a quick jump cut to showcase the best way to reduce lag on a server. One, using paper. Two, using paper with these settings. So there we go. That is now updated. And if we scroll down through here, I have left kind of helpful comments on these to where I know what was done, right? So first off, we have armor stand ticks, and this is from true to false. This is going to stop armor stands from ticking on your server, basically meaning they're not going to be using those extra resources. This can break some mechanics, but overall, it is worth doing for the performance benefit. Next up is anti x-ray. This is actually going to cause your server a bit more lag, but if you do care about x-ray on your server, change this to true. It's the best anti x-ray out there, and you can play around with these settings if you want, but overall, just turning it on like this will be the best thing you can do. Except if you don't care about x-ray, then leave this at false because then obviously you don't care and there's no reason to use the extra resources for it. From there, we can move on down to right here, mob spawner tick rate. Mob spawner tick rate is how many ticks it takes for a mob spawner to spawn a mob, right? So we change this to two, doubling it from one and doubling the performance of the server there when it comes to mob spawning from mob spawners. Next up, we have chest cat detection. We turned this to true, disabling it and turning it off. Do you really need cats to lay on chest? Probably not, but if that is a core benefit of your server, you won't want to leave this, uh, leave this on false here, but we want to turn it on because we don't want those cats looking for chest. Next up, we have the grass spread tick rate right here. This was one before. Grass does not need to spread that fast. Let's change that to four and slow it down dramatically. Use engine craft redstone. This is huge. This is going to revolutionize the efficiency of redstone in your server without breaking much of anything. Maybe like one or two farms from way back in the day would break, but overall, this is going to be a very efficient way to make redstone work and you want to change this to true. From there, we have the container tick rate. Basically, this is how often containers are updated when they are open on your server. And uh, well, three is good. Up from one, that's a huge increase. Three X the amount and means a lot less lag. Next up, we have the non-player arrow despawn rate. This is when a skeleton shoots a arrow. When does it despawn? After three seconds, 60 ticks. Creative arrows, player shoots an arrow in creative. How long does it despawn? Three seconds. By default, these are disabled. I recommend turning them on. Per player mob spawns is next, and we want to make sure this is true. This might be true by default, but if you're updating a server from older versions, it may actually not be. So just make sure that is set to true. Next up, we have the optimized explosions. Change this to true because it's going to make TNT a lot more efficient on your server. Despawn ranges, this is 
pretty easy. Just make them all the same, right? Which is going to be now 28 and 96 down from 32 and 128. We're going to set these two soft as 28 and hard as 96. And then we want to make sure water ambient is left the same because everything else is the same except water ambient. That is 32 and 64 respectively. From there, we can move on down to max entity collisions, which is set to two from eight. Entity collisions is a huge reason that mobs cause lag on a server. So changing this to two is a worthwhile change. So I would recommend setting it to one which is insane, but two should be sufficient. Auto save chunks per tick. This is set to 24 by default. We want a server with 100 players and I have it set to six. If that tells you anything, it is going to make chunks saving so much more efficient and so much better on your server, meaning chunks are actually slowing down the chunk saving, which lags your server a ton. Chunk saving is a huge server lagging thing. So slowing that down, making it in some ways less efficient, but overall, reduces drag on your server. This is a must change and one of the biggest things that you can do. Prevent moving into unloaded chunks. This is just going to prevent stressing your server when it can't load chunks fast enough. Change this to true. If you're running into that issue though, you probably need better hardware, unfortunately. Moving on down for hoppers, disable move event. I changed this to true, but it can break hoppers. But if you're getting a lot of hopper lag, changing disable move event to true is a big way to fix it. Last but not least, we have the alt item despawn rate. This is something that's kind of optional, right? You, but changing this to true here and then adding in items here is a great thing. This is set in ticks. So 300 ticks is how long it takes for cobblestone to despawn. And that's probably okay. Most people don't need cobblestone. I recommend adding in cobblestone, netherrack, deep slate, and any of the other things that people get just, and usually just trash. Add these in here and take the basically drag that those items cause just sitting on your server away. So there you have it. That is how you can set up these files. I know that was a lot and that's why you linked out to that article in the description down below. Full credit goes to them. That's where most of the lag settings that are here are pulled from. So go check out that article as a great resource. But nonetheless, my name is Nick. If you want some amazing, awesome, in the weeds server videos like this, we do them all the time. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I am out. Peace.